How long does it have to be? About 10 minutes. 10 minutes. You know not much happened yesterday, don't you? Hello and welcome to the Echo's Blood Red Almost Daily Agenda. <laughs> I'm here with Paul Gorst and we're going to be discussing Liverpool's 1-0 win over Sheffield United yesterday. Paul, um, Gini Wijnaldum got the goal thanks to a pretty big mistake from Dean Henderson. What did you make of it? Well, struggling to remember a, a, a performance as bad as that from Liverpool for, for a long time. Um, so both of them have obviously won. Uh, Liverpool are going to have off days like any other team in the world, not a problem there. Um, so the fact that they're still picking up points, even when they're, they're as mediocre as they were yesterday, bodes well for a team who were looking to win the win the Premier League title. Um, credit to, to Sheffield United. Um, they, they made it difficult for Liverpool to play. They couldn't really get into any rhythm. The, foot, the, the three, three at the back with the wing-back system really helped to um, stop Andy Robertson and Trent Alexander-Arnold in particular bombing forward. And for much of the first half, Liverpool, the passes were going astray. Little flicks and tricks weren't coming off. Um, it was sluggish. It was just off colour from virtually every player. There was maybe only Fabinho, who um, who could, well, Fabinho and Virgil Van Dijk, who could maybe hold their hands up and say that they played anywhere near their usual capabilities. Um, Adrian as well, but um, obviously he's the goalkeeper, and he's just he seems to be a very consistent performer, doesn't he, at the moment? So. Couldn't really include him in that, but I'm talking about players like Trent Alexander-Arnold, <clears throat> even Joel Matip. The front three, particularly Roberto Firmino, I thought he had one of his quietest days in a long, long time. Um, and Liverpool have still managed to come away from there with, with the three points, so that that's a massive result. And you wouldn't normally look at a, a win at Sheffield United as, as a huge result and a, a massive moment in the season, but in the context of it, Liverpool wouldn't have won yesterday. <clears throat> they would have only have have taken what would have been a six-point um, lead up until Manchester City played Everton, they would have cut that to three. And you'd be looking at it today with City over Liverpool's shoulder and a little bit of concern there. But Liverpool have still got the, the five-point buffer. And, um, yeah, so what I would say is it wasn't a vintage performance, but uh, a massive, massive result. Yeah, certainly. I think it certainly felt like a, a crucial win for Liverpool. And as you say, it's, it's strange when you're thinking, you're looking at Sheffield United, you're not thinking, oh, that's going to be a massive win. But yeah. in terms of how it all played out, it was just a, such a big win for Liverpool. And going forward, I think that's going to play a really important part yeah. for Liverpool's season. And now, obviously, Wijnaldum got the goal. Um, <clears throat> he doesn't obviously score for Liverpool all that much, but it just seems to be in the, in, the, in those big moments, in those big games, in those must-win crucial times, he, he comes up with the goods. Yeah, so that's his, his fourth goal away from home for Liverpool. And I know there was a record where when he played for Newcastle that he didn't score away from home at all, I think, in his one season yeah. at Newcastle. And before his goal in Rome, which was April 2018, I think his last away goal was for Feyenoord back in ooh, 2015, maybe May 2015. Um, so he does score important goals when he does score away from Anfield. You're looking at the obviously the goal in the Champions League semi-final against Roma. Um, he scored City, one against um, he scored one against Tottenham, didn't he? Um, yeah. At Wembley last season to, to open the score, and the one against Cardiff was a, a similar one to yesterday, where Liverpool were playing a team who, who they should be beating away from home, and it was all getting a bit tense and a bit nervous, and Liverpool were, were going for the title, weren't they? And they needed to yeah. pick up every point they could, and I think from Alexander Arnold's corner, he just swept the home on the volley yeah. and opened the score. And I think I think his celebration that day was massive because it was, it was a huge outpouring of relief, and I think. Um, that kind of symbolised the way Liverpool fans felt that afternoon at the Cardiff City Stadium. And then again yesterday, um, make no mistake about it, it was a horrible error from Dean Henderson. Um, Liverpool will struggle to to find another goalkeeper as, as welcoming as that one for the rest of the season. But they have benefited from the mistake. They've got the three points. It's another massive goal away from home for Genie and Aldum and um, a huge three points that keeps Liverpool... Um, uh, seven wins from seven, um, 16 wins on the bounce and keeps them um, well cleared of City at, at this stage. Yeah, absolutely. And just on Wijnaldum, obviously when he plays for Holland, he plays in that bit more of like an advanced role. Mm. And he scores and he assists and his, his record seems to be on fire, but he kind of has like a bit of a different role at Liverpool. And, you know, he said today, hasn't he, that he doesn't feel the pressure. Yeah, um, we managed to grab him in the mix on after the game and, and we obviously spoke to him for... Five to ten minutes, and he said he doesn't feel the pressure to 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 chip in with the goals, and it's not really the midfielders' um, remit, is it? To, yeah. They're not in there to to create too much and and score too much. It's obviously helpful when they do, and 
and obviously more of it will be encouraged. But they're in the side to work hard, graft, um, get about the pitch and just keep it ticking over and, and trying to play the front three and the full backs. Because we know how influential <clears throat> Alexander Arnold and Robertson are on, on the right and left. Between them, they I think they combined with 25 assists maybe last season. And obviously the front three, uh, uh, so many goals we've seen those, those three over the last uh, two and a bit years. So um, the midfielders aren't in there to rack up 10 and 15 a season, but if they can chip in whenever they can, great. And um, Juan Alden's role is different for Liverpool than it is under Ronald, <coughs> Ronald Koeman at Holland. I think he's encouraged a lot more to get forward um, for this national team, break into the box and um, use his athleticism to, to cover both uh, both areas of the pitch. But... With Liverpool, he's very much more about breaking up the play, <clears throat> keeping it simple, and keeping Liverpool on the front foot as quickly as they can. And it's it's a subtle subtle role, subtle difference in, in the role, but it's uh, it's one that's clear. And um, he said himself, he doesn't really feel the need to chip in because everyone is responsible for everything. Um, everyone's got a role to play, and he's just happy enough um, scoring as as and when he can. Yeah, I think that makes total sense. And to be fair, but. Do you think, you know, obviously we've seen him score and he scores well. He, you know, yesterday, despite Henderson's mistake, it was a good hit. He struck the ball yeah. really cleanly on the volley from the edge of the box. I know obviously it's a terrible mistake and there's no getting around that, but he still hits the ball well. And we've seen that he can score. He scores decent goals. Do you think Liverpool could perhaps use him in a different way or should use him in a different way? Or do you think it absolutely just is that's the system that works? Yeah, I mean, I suppose you are taking a little bit away from what he can bring you going forward. He was a number 10 for Newcastle, wasn't he? And yeah. Um, I think he got to double figures in this one season at Newcastle, if I'm not wrong. And um, he was certainly playing in a different role to what he does now. But um, you're sacrificing that for the greater good of the team, aren't you? And Liverpool have got uh, better players in, in the final third than, than Genie Van Alden in terms of creating and, and scoring the front three alone. And, you know, they are what they are, the three world class talents. We all know this. So if you're sacrificing a little bit of Genie Van Alden's attacking output for those three, then. So be it. Um, he's such a versatile player, and he can play. He can play defensive mid. He can play box to box. He can play as a number ten. Uh, very versatile midfielder, and, and um, he's one who's so important to Liverpool. But um, if he's not going to be allowed to get forward as much as maybe even he would like, then so be it. Because uh, Liverpool's system isn't um, isn't struggling too much at the moment, is it? Yeah, I think absolutely, totally makes sense. And obviously, as you say, when the midfield can chip in with the goals, their assists, then mm. it's obviously more than welcomed. Another thing that I slightly wanted to touch up on or touch upon from yesterday is obviously people have called Liverpool lucky, and to be fair, they have been. But you know, Mane, Salah score their chances on another day. But yeah. do you think again this has just showed again by Liverpool that they they know how to win? Like in the, they, it's another way of winning. Yeah, one hundred percent. I mean that's. I think you'd be hard pushed to find another game this season where Roberto Firmino, Mohamed Salah, and and uh, Sadio Mane are all as as out of sorts as they were yesterday. Maybe if one is, the other two are still on fire, or or even if you know it's just maybe Salah or Mane, whoever j- just doing it alone, that they're certainly capable of deciding games on their own. So um, I suppose Sheffield United were a bit fortunate in that respect, but they did defend very well with the the three at the back and then reverting to five at the back when they needed it to be. And managed to shut Liverpool out for the majority of the game, but uh, when Liverpool did break, they they had chances, didn't they? And should have scored. Sadly, um, Mohamed Salah in the second half, stream clear, good save from Henderson. To be fair, he definitely should have stuck that away. Sadly, Omane should have put one away when there was about four of them on the, on the counter. Um, so on another day, Liverpool put those away, and they're coming away from Bramall Lane with a fairly comfortable win. So, um, I, I mean. As you say, Liverpool are, are finding different ways to win, and um, maybe seasons previously wouldn't have won that, and they might have drawn or, or even have lost it if the <clears throat> the defence wasn't as strong as it is. So it's just about finding different ways to win. Is and Liverpool can't win every game four nil, four and five nil. It's just ludicrous to to even think that they're going to be able to do that. Uh, seen some fans on on social media having a bit of a moan that it wasn't you know threes and fours and whatever, but. Um, Let's be realistic. Liverpool can't do that every week. If they're still managing to win when they're not playing well, fantastic. Um, Liverpool fans will take that all day. Yeah, exactly. And it's onwards and upwards for Liverpool. Seven wins out of seven. Five points clear at the top of the Premier League. And we'll be back again with the agenda next time. Thank you very much for watching. I was looking at your watch and I think it's just about ten minutes. <laughs>